We head down under uh, once again for the Repco uh, Supercar Series. Um, they were on the Gold Coast this weekend. Um, an interesting track um, for many reasons. Obviously, the spectacle of the event is ginormous. You know, huge crowds. I think they broke the record attendance this weekend as well. The racing action was not too bad. Um, it wasn't as kind of boring as last year. Look, this year. Uh, had a bit more entertainment to it. I was actually lucky enough last year to attend the event on the Sunday. And I must admit, with all the buildings around, um, lack of access because you're literally walking on footpaths like you would do on the streets of the Gold Coast. Kind of hard to get around a little bit as well. And you don't really see that much unless you're in a grandstand and lucky enough to see a screen, which once again, there's not many you can't see. However, this year I had the privilege of watching it on my couch. And um, yeah, I was quite entertained by the weekend. There was a bit of uh, drama here and there. I'll discuss the unfortunate events of Chas Moss this weekend. I feel very bad for him. Um, yeah, he had a really, really bad weekend. But um, good news for the Tickford team as they managed to secure a 1 2. Um, the drivers couldn't even remember the last time they even had a 1 2. And uh, it was very good. Cameron Waters was the victor on the Saturday out of teammate Thomas Randall, who for me was uh, quite a shock. Um, obviously, Randall, we know, has been, you know, improving steadily over the years. But this weekend took a leap, like a giant leap. Um, yes, yeah, qualifying wasn't all that great, but race pace was really good. And at one point, he was... Uh, actually pushing Cam Waters so hard, the team said, um, don't hold Thomas up. So Cam just went faster and took off. But, um, you know, the threat was there anyway. So, um, yeah, very impressive from uh, Thomas Randall to to have that ability. Um, the weekend overall, I'll uh, explain, was very important for the uh, Drivers' Championship. Obviously, this is the second to last round uh, for those who don't follow it. Uh, with one more to go here in Adelaide, um, in a couple of weeks' time, I believe the 12th to 14th of November. So, yeah, two weeks' time. And the championship is going to the last round. It hasn't been decided yet between, well, unfortunately, Chas Moss is pretty much out of it. I think he mathematically is still within reach, but realistically not. Um, he is... The battle, sorry, is between teammates of the Triple Eight team, the Red Bull Empire Racing team of uh, Will Brown and Brock Feeney. Those two protagonists and teammates will be going head to head in the last round. Uh, the gap between them, I didn't write it down for some odd reason. I will just quickly grab it. Um, is one hundred and I believe eighty-seven or seventy-eight. I probably should have written that down. Anyway. The gap's really small now. It was just over 200, I believe 204. Um, and now it's gone to 178, I believe, or 180. 180. 180 is the gap. So, um, yeah, it's still a pretty long shot, if I'm honest, for Brock Feeney to win the championship. However, um, as the media coverage demonstrated, Will Brown hasn't really been very successful on the streets of Adelaide, and neither was he before on the Gold Coast. And I mentioned this in our um, Gold Coast preview on our social medias. I did a live on TikTok as well, um, that I was a bit concerned for Will Brown for this weekend because of that and the lack of pace he's had over the years. Uh, the highest finish he's had in the, in the last couple of years is 11th at the Gold Coast. And that's actually where he started on the Saturday. Um, he had a ginormous mistake during qualifying on the Saturday morning, uh, putting it into the fence at turn 11, a popular spot for incidences over the weekend. And, um, yeah, kind of made his weekend a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. Obviously, like we said, all he had to do was really finish around Brock Feeney and make it 
doable for for Adelaide and make the you know take the pressure off himself. Um, yeah, he did. I must admit though, he uh, he did a really good race during the Saturday race and managed to finish in P seven. Um, teammate Brock Feeney actually was the most consistent driver of the weekend and uh, finished third in both races. Um, but we'll go through the results for the Saturday race. The Saturday race, I feel, was uh, was not as entertaining as the Sunday. Um, we'll go through the results anyway. It was Cam Waters, who was the victor, ahead of Randall in second. Teammates, Tickford won two. Uh, obviously, Feeney was third, followed by uh, Matt Payne, Brody Kostecki uh, after the Bathurst 1000 win. David Reynolds after the rebuild of his brand new uh, Team 18 Kamara after he pretty much read it off at Bathurst. Um, Will Brown, like we said before, was P7. Andre Heimgardner, um, double top 10 finish this weekend. Race one, he finished P8. Uh, Richie Stanaway, unfortunately, I forgot to mention this, but he started on the front row. He had provisional pole position in the normal qualifying session. And then uh, during the top 10 shoot, I didn't really... Actually, no, sorry. Apologies. He did really good in the top 10 shoot. He qualified second. So only lost the one spot. Still in the front row, which was great. Some sort of balance issue setup-wise they went with, and it didn't quite work. And by lap uh, yeah, 10 or something, he was down the order and, yeah, finished in P9. And I'm going to shed a tear, I reckon, but uh, Chasm lost it P10. And the reason I'm disappointed well, sounding very disappointed is because it was disappointing. He was, uh, I would say, just a bit slower than Cam Waters. He was very, very, very quick. And it was a faulty gear shift module uh, on his car on the dashboard, which screwed the electrical system in a way that I've never seen before. Not even the commentators, Mark Scaife and Neil Grompton, have ever seen before. Basically, every time he was changing gear, or even not changing gear, the dashboard was reading a different gear than what he was in. At some points, was even reading reverse while he was doing 220 kilometers down the back straight on the Gold Coast. Yeah, that wasn't right. Um, it was saying he was in sixth gear when he was probably in fourth. And yeah, it was all, all wrong. And while driving, it wasn't the problem. Obviously, you know, you, you get your momentum. You know which gears you're in. You're a professional racing driver. That's fine. He was able to work off the sound. But when it came to the pit stops and using the pit speed limit button, it the car just didn't know what it was doing. And where you're meant to be driving at 40 kilometers an hour during the pit lane, he was driving at 20. And at some points, 15. Barely moving. Um, he lost a lot of time during both pit stops. The second one was more painful than the first. Um, yeah, he fell all the way back down to 14th at one point after coming into the pits in third position. So, yeah. Actually, the, the issues he was having didn't... Uh, hang on, let me rephrase that. The issues he was having, Brock Feeney actually thought he was behind him and that Moss was further up the road. So when Feeney crossed the line, he goes, oh, cool, fourth position, not bad. And the, guy, and the team goes, no, you're third. He had no idea what happened to Chas Mostert because he was in the pit lane for so long, he never saw him um, because he was behind him, if that makes sense. So, yeah, crazy turn of events for Chas Mostert. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, Sunday didn't go any better either. However, they did fix the problem for him. And I may as well mention him, even though he's not even in the top 10 list. Um, he had a issue in the pits where the team, unfortunately, did not put enough fuel for him to make it to the end. Now, there wasn't any um, rules on how much fuel you had to put into the car, but I believe they had the wrong amount of fuel in the car based off some sort of hose issue while filling up the car. And uh, yeah, that run his race had to come in for a third pit stop when everyone did too. Uh, in the end, he finished, I think it was P... Where is it? Oh, I'm still going down the order here. Um... Well, that's team standings. There we go. Um, he finished 11th, so just, just outside the 10. So, yeah, disappointing week all over for Chaz Mostert. Um, yeah, moving on to the Sunday race. Um, Sunday race was a bit more entertaining. Uh, well, mainly on just in the first lap. So the Saturday race had no safety car interventions at all. Everyone drove really smoothly, really nicely. 
Um, actually, before I do go along with race two, there is another driver I'd like to shout out just because I feel bad for him. Is uh, James Golding. Uh, he did unbelievably good in qualifying, was in the shootout for both days. I believe he started eighth and I want to say fifth, but I don't think that's right. Anyway, started on the 10, both races uh, for the new Lon Premier High team. Had enormous potential. He was running in third for probably the first half of the Saturday race. And then, unfortunately, he had every problem under the sun when it came to pit stops. I believe they had a uh, an issue with the wheel nut on the Saturday. And then the same thing happened on the Sunday. Yeah, it was just a... Oh, hang on. The Saturday race, yeah, also had no, no cool suit, which on the Gold Coast is just impossible to imagine. Him even doing the race, let alone um, yeah, finishing. I think he finished in 16th. Yep. And then the Sunday he finished 13th. So, yeah, terrible weekend. Um, and he qualified, like I said before. Yeah, it was uh, 5th and 8th. So I did, I did have it right. Good for me. But, um, yeah, unfortunately not for James Golding. It wasn't good at all. And, um, yeah, I wanted to give him a quick shout-out for the amazing work he did in qualifying. But, yeah, unfortunately there's there's elements to motorsport that is outside of the control of the driver. And these things happen as uh, Ivan will let you know next week. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, anyway, race two, race two results on the Sunday. Actually, before we go to the results, on lap one, um, Richie Stanaway, I think, is the cause of this crash, not Anton Di Pasquale. But there was a car park at turn 11 um, where about eight cars were involved. A few didn't get uh, touched anywhere, but they had to stop on track. But, uh, yeah, a bit of a car park on the streets of the Gold Coast where, uh, yeah, Richie Stanaway kind of dive-bombed um, Anton Di Pasquale in the shell car. He kind of avoided having a collision with him, but then ended up hitting Ryan Wood into the tire barrier. But then in the meantime, a bit of a bottleneck situation where he slowed up to avoid Richie Stanaway, but cars behind him, David Reynolds and James Courtney, didn't. And spun Anton into the wall. I've never seen a car hit a wall so flush on the side. It just went like bang and then stopped immediately. And then a yeah, bottleneck of uh, James Corney being sideways. And then Jackson Evans was involved. Macaulay Jones, Bryce Forward. I just mentioned half the BJR team, which is true. Three of them were in this crash. Um, there was one more uh, that was involved. I think Aaron Love in the end of it as well. Trying to think. Oh, Tim Slade. Sorry, Tim Slade was the other one that got um, sandwiched, basically. Um, all of these drivers, besides Anton Di Pasquale, were able to continue, um, surprisingly. I guess um, <laughs> Nick Berger. Uh, you know what fixes a damaged bumper? You rip it off, literally with your hands. Uh, you rip, you, they just ripped it off. Um, half of it was still on there, but um, the, like, so imagine a bumper, instead of seeing a left and right half and half. It was actually up and down. They just ripped the bottom half of it off and just kept it going. So yeah, that's how you fix a bumper in supercars. You just rip it off. Uh, but yeah, like I said, all those all those drivers were actually managed to uh, finish the race. I must admit, every single one of them finished 15th and lower in that order, except for Mark Winterbottom. He got away with it. Uh, while he wasn't really involved, um, he had to stop in the in the mess. And finished 12th. Now, unfortunately, I they haven't even mentioned this, but a quick shout out to Mark Winterbottom, who unfortunately has announced he is retiring from full time supercar driving. He obviously intends to be a co driver next year in the Enduro Cup. It'd be a really, sh- really sad to see that he's basically been forced out um, of supercars. Unfortunately, he's becoming more of a Young man's game. Obviously, we've got Cooper Murray joining, Kai Allen joining uh, as rookies next year from Super 2. So, yeah, age is becoming a factor. Um, I think next year, James Courtney's last year as well. You know, you know, drivers like David Reynolds could be on the edge soon. Obviously, Tim Slade's announced his retirement as well. You know, Will Davison could be coming to the end. Yeah, there's a fair few drivers. That's probably actually all of them. Those four. I think are coming toward the end of their career, unfortunately. But 
let's hope they can stick around for as long as possible. Um, yeah, Sunday race. Let's finally go through the results. Uh, Brody Kostecki was actually the victor who qualified on pole. Uh, top 10 shootout was very interesting because it was uh, Mother Nature that uh, got in the way, and it wasn't because of rain. It was actually the sun. Um, obviously, the sun's always out, but it was the clouds that got in the way for... Actually, they didn't get in the way. They helped... Um, Brody Kostecki, Will Brown, uh, Brock Feeney. Helped those three in particular. Oh, and Jack LeBrock. He had a very good um, shootout lap as well. Those three, uh, four drivers I just mentioned, during the top 10 shootout, which goes for about 50 minutes, they had a lot of shade on the track at their time of running, which benefited them massively to the point where they were almost half a second quicker then the remaining drivers who were faster than them all weekend, which was Rand- uh, sorry, Waters, um, Payne, Stanaway, those guys there. So, yeah, that um, shook things up a little bit. But, yeah, Brody Kostecki got the pole position thanks to the clouds and uh, never looked back. Uh, he had a gripping start, and uh, no one ever saw him pretty much the whole race. Will Brown started second, finished second. So he finished ahead of teammate Brock Feeney, which was great to see. Um, Cam, sorry, Feeney, obviously, I said before, finished third both races. Cam Waters, uh, yeah, his top 10 shootout lap wasn't great, hence why he started. He started sixth and uh, managed, to wait, managed to get up to fourth. Thomas Randall wasn't even in the top 10 in the shootout. Uh, so he wasn't even in the top 10 shootout. I think he started 11th and finished fifth. So, yeah, like I said, his race pace was unreal. Right, Andre Heimgardner, who was very lucky. Let's say that in qualifying on the Sunday, he put it into the fence. Um, They couldn't, actually. He put it in the fence at turn 13, I want to say, 12 or 13, and uh, into the tire barrier. And the car was stuck underneath the tire wall uh, to the point where they actually couldn't pull him out with the recovery vehicle. Um, They snapped a couple ropes in trying to attempt to do so. Well, they actually had to bring the tow truck out to pull him out, which was successful. That means he had to get towed back. I think he actually stayed in the car in the tow truck on the tow truck. Then they got him back to the pit lane. Pretty much, there was there was, there was no uh, mechanical damage done. It was all cosmetic. And um, yeah, on his one and only lap, put it into the top ten. So shout out to Andre for ne- for not giving up and the BJR crew. Uh, Richie Stanaway finished seventh. Um, Jack LeBrock didn't have the good race pace like he had in qualifying, uh, finished P8. Matt Payne also um, had some issues during the race. Um, yeah, he was should have been a lot higher than P9. And David Reynolds rounded off the top 10. And like I said, there's only one round to go. Championship on the line. Team championships have been wrapped up. They're all done and won by Red Bull once again. So no shame, Ben Gisbergen, no problem. Um, and no problem with Teams Championship either. They're about to go one, two in some way or shape or form. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that Chas Moss is still mathematically in contention, but realistically not. He had a awful weekend. Yeah, uh, he's just, I think he's 190 odd, 191 points. Sorry, 291, not 191, 291 points uh, down. So. Uh, that's just quick maths off my head. I'm not even sure if that's right. But, yeah, going to be a long shot. And, um, yeah, hopefully there will be improvements in Adelaide for him. He's very good in Adelaide, so he doesn't really care about the championship anymore. We'll be going for the race win. But, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. And if you, and if you are going to the Adelaide 500, me, Daniel, and Ivan will be there some way, shape, or form. Um, so if you are there and you see us, Make sure you say hello. We would love to meet as many people as possible at the event. We're very much looking forward to it. So.